up your hands unto heaven. Say, I'm connected to heaven. I refuse to suffer the plight of this earth. Through my connection with Jesus, I'm a guaranteed overcomer. I overcome. I'm not born again to fail again. I'm born again to champion in life. Say, I'm a champion since I'm connected to the mighty champion who is Jesus. I'm unstoppable because I'm now under a supreme covenant in the blood of Jesus. A mighty covenant. A covenant of victory. Covenant of prosperity. Say, thank you, Jesus. Now let's pray. Lift up your hands again. Say, my Father and my God, I'm here to announce, I'm here to reaffirm that you are my Father. I didn't hear you say, you are my Father. I am your child. I belong to you. You belong to me. My name is written in the register of heaven. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me. I'm on this earth as a representative of heaven. I'm the ambassador of Jesus Christ. I have authority over demonic spirits, over witches, over wizards, over warlords. In my blood, I carry the DNA of Jesus Christ. I carry the blessing of the Lord. There's no curse in my system. Clap your hands and say there's no curse in my system. In the name of Jesus, say I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed coming in. Say 2024, you are my year of rising higher and higher. Jump and rise higher and higher. Oh, la masukabaya. Yeah, la masukabaya and tamasaka. Utam unstoppable. Oh, she la masukabaya and tamasakabaya. Oh, la makayanda. Say in the order of Isaiah chapter 60. In the amplified version AMPC. Say, I rise. Say, I rise. Say, I rise. Are you ready to rise? Say, I rise. And I shine. Spiritually. Financially. I rise. Socially. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Oh, Mantala basukabaya. Mantala basukabaya. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. Welcome the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Ma lida sita masaka. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2 verse number 20. You have the anointing. You are not looking for it. Eh? Say, I have it. Say, anointing. Keep on increasing. Anointing of the Lord. Keep on manifesting. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and say, I have the anointing. I'm anointed. Because I'm anointed. I'm unstoppable. Say, I have the anointing. Le prohashina masukababaya. Oh, Liba Sukabaya. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your holy name. It's so exciting to be back here. And I want to appreciate your pastor, the man of God, your prophet, Apostle Rodney, together with his dear wife, the prophetess, Pastor Ferrai. Hallelujah. And their daughters, the rising giants of the 21st century. The shakers, the movers. Hallelujah. An army is rising. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
I bring you greetings from my family, my dear wife, Pastor Zandile, my wife of 38 years counting, and from my, from my five daughters and one son, and my growing number of grandchildren. I think I've got five so far. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this coming Sunday, I'll be celebrating my 62nd birthday. When someone says I'm sick, I, I, I don't understand. What do you mean? The Bible says you are the bone of his bones. The blood of his blood. We are pregnant. Touch and say we are pregnant. We are you know what you are pregnant with? Every Christian must move around with pregnancy. We are pregnant of the Holy Ghost. He lives on the inside of us. The Bible says if the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of us, that same Holy Ghost will rejuvenate, will revitalize. So when sickness attacks, you don't complain. You say, Makuta li basukaraya. <laughs> Say, I have it, I have it, I have it. Oh, shalaba sakababaya. We are bearers of the divine order. We are bearers of the presence of God. We are bearers of the Holy Ghost. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 17. The Bible says, The Lord our God, He is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord has taken residence, there shall be liberty. You unstop Him. Ah, 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 ah. If someone tells me that apostle, the so and so there, we heard him talking that he wants to bewitch you, I just laugh. I'm unbewitchable. I'm uncursable. La custa seca sita. Uh, 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 uh. Talk about yourself and say, I'm uncursable. I'm, un I'm unbewitchable. Yes! When we come here, it's always strange. People stand. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate your pastor. He's making declarations. <sighs> when we were with you guys in December, I think around the 5th of December, he was making declarations. I was there in October, he was making declarations. And as I was sitting there, I'm thinking, I said, you guys, what are you doing with the declarations? I will not shout because a man of my age cannot shout. You see, some people move around with big titles. Bishop so-and-so. Archbishop so-and-so. Me, what speaks are my results. So, at my age, I'm helping the younger generation to prosper. In Swaziland, I'm an apostle. By the grace of God, we built a church that costed one million US dollars way back in 2009. Uh -uh. We are going to be upgrading it this year. Improving it. And personally, uh, my wife runs a guest house. You remember I told you. So now, because I'm a property developer, I own properties in my city. I've discovered that Christians have got more noise than results. And it annoys me. My friends, I've got rich Muslim friends. I've got rich Jewish friends. I, I, you, for you to be my friend, I love everyone. But when it comes to friendship, you must be loaded.
I've discovered that poverty is the number one enemy of the human being who was created in God's image. Christians need to wage war against poverty. You can't be a blessing as long as you are poor. Hallelujah. So, from as way back as 2000 and um, I can't even remember. 2000 and or oh, 1989. Yeah. I started budgeting in millions. Because these things never happen because I'm a Christian. You see, tonight, before we go into tomorrow night, I want to give you what is called weapons of victory. Among your mother's children, you must be the best of the best. Amen. When Jesus came, I was telling the Christians in the Passover service, in the order of Isaiah 61, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Look at the first group. Hello, look at the first group mentioned. To who? Jesus came to restore to us what sin and curse is stole from us. When he said 2,000 years ago it was 3 p.m. at the cross of, of Calvary, it is finished. He was saying every curse has been dealt with. He came to put power in your hands. Are you hearing me? Lift up your hand like this. Say, now that I'm a Christian, power is in my hand. Hallelujah. Say poverty can never block me again. Say I possess power. I possess the anointing. I'm together with the Holy Spirit. I have power to conquer poverty in the name of Jesus. So in Isaiah 61, he says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. The word gospel there in the Hebrew is good news. What good news can you bring to a poor person? Excuse me. Let's, let's de- what good news? If you, you see a poor person, say, I'm coming with good news for you. The poor person will already tell you, please, how do I come out of poverty? So Jesus came to make it possible that anyone who will believe in him will break free from poverty. And the moment you become a Christian, you carry the power, the capacity, the ability to break through from poverty. Say, I break through. Yeah, do like I do. Say, I break through in the name. Oh, Shalina Masukaba Yantama Saka. Yes, do your hands like this. Would I break through? I break through. I'm unstoppable. Say, poverty. You are under my feet. You are behind. I'm moving forward. Oh, Shalina Masuka. Poverty is my number one enemy. I hate an empty bank account. I just don't like it. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I I, I arrived at OR, so uh, an Uber takes me to my office in Joburg. So along the freeway, the police are stopping us. I think they just suspected the car. Men of God, and they were searching us. They took us out, our bags. So when they pick my wallet, they find that my wallet has got 15 bank, account, bank, bank cards. This is, this is a dealer. I saw them speaking. And then they flip the wallet open. It had pounds, euros, dollars, Chinese, Japanese, Hong Kong, is for real. The police are saying, why do you keep all these cards? I say, these are the nations I go to. 
I'm a pastor. The eighth is the Lord. Because I decided that from the children of my mother, the children of poverty were all poor. I'm going to push myself higher by force. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Refuse to carry a wallet, a handbag that is carrying newspapers. And business, cut off businesses that never started. Say I'm angry now. I didn't hear you say I'm angry now. Zalina Masukabaya. So the cops were checking. I said, let me see if there are rents there. So I pulled the rents. I said, you can share. Lipa Kustakabaya. Are you understanding? The last time I was here, I told you, I wonder if you still remember. It. Are you a money commander? Let me see the commanders. Say, money come. You've got to bow to me. Say the earth is the Lord's. And God is my father. He has placed me in this world. Say the silver and the gold belongs to my daddy. Money don't waste my time. You belong to my father. US dollar come. Sterling pound come. Euro come. Japanese yen come. Dutch mark come. Zela basuka baba yanta masaka. Yeshalina masaka. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Say, I hate poverty. So we fast forward, we go to John 10, 10. What did Jesus say? He said the thief comes except to do what? To steal, eh? to do what? To kill and to what? And to destroy. And I made a statement to still remember it. I said, life is warfare. You don't get what you necessarily pray for or wish for. You get what you fight for. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a fighter. I didn't hear you say, I'm a fighter. Say, I take it by force. Say, I'm unstoppable. I'm unblockable. I take it by force. Hallelujah. And I also made a statement. I said, Consistent giving guarantees consistent receiving. Because givers are receivers. Power is not in giving. It is in consistent giving. And after you drop your money here, on the altar it looks as a note. In the realm of the spirit is seed. So you begin to make some declarations and say, now that I'm giving, the money that I gave the whole of last week, translate into a harvest. Oh my God, I didn't hear you. You say, translate into a harvest. Let more money come. Let more money come. Because Jesus said, give and it shall be what? Give. I was telling the brothers as I was coming here from the airport, God always gives me a special word for this country. From 2023 April up to the year 2020, 20, 2030, 30th March, it's seven years of plenty. Seven. From last year up to 2030, you need to be as aggressive as crazy. You must look for opportunities like never before. Zimbabwe, because of the sanctions, men of God, has got what is called crucial commodity scarcity. Things you get easy in South Africa, you'll not easily get here. Even if you get them, the price will be punitive. It will be high. That scenario 
creates a golden opportunity. Because suppliers of commodities are makers of serious money. As the man of God was helping us to confess some powerful scriptures, one of the things that you need to be a master on, you need to be someone who is very good in scouting for opportunities. Where others look, you must see. Are you hearing me? There's very little that God will do for you. He has given you the brain, the eyes, the hands, the Holy Spirit, the word of God, a man of God, your prophet, and the prophetess. You are covered. There's no reason for you to fail. In these seven years, these are years where you must become rich by force. Your clapping is not serious. These seven years are years where you need to pray but work more. Not working for a boss. Working for yourself. I charge you. I charge you in the presence of the Lord. Because of the golden opportunity of commodity scarcity in this country. Please take a diary, take a notebook, survey the land like Isaac. Isaac discovered in Genesis 26 that there was scarcity of corn in the land because of the famine. He decided by faith to sow the land, plow the land, and he sowed. The Bible says that same year he harvested a hundredfold because the, year the Lord blessed him. Every born again Christian, let me tell you now, I don't care what your mind tells you. As long as you are seriously born again, washed by the blood, occupied by the Holy Spirit, you don't have a curse. Except the curses you create with your mind. Are you hearing me? You've got to tell yourself I'm blessed. Because the Bible says just as you think so shall you be. Are you hearing me? If the man of God declares some things about curses, it's just to remind you that you, are, you have got power over them. Are you understanding me? A curse cannot survive in my life. No, it can't survive. It can't survive because I have the Holy Spirit who's uncaseable. When I move around, I'm pregnant with divinity. I'm a bearer of the divine order. Move around and say, I'm a bearer of the divine order. Are you understanding me? The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. About three months ago, the Lord opened my eyes, man of God. He said the biggest killer that destroys Christians is doubt. It is the devil number one weapon of mass destruction. When you stand before the mirror, you must see yourself as a child of God. Do you understand? Let me make the statement. Children of people of high position, they are proud. They are confident. They fear nothing. They are arrogant. I want you to be arrogant towards the devil. Arrogant towards poverty. Are you understanding me? Because your father is bigger than any president on the earth. Your father is greater than any king. You are a child of a king of kings. You are a child of the creator of the universe. Move around and say I'm not ordinary. My father is gigantic. My father is mighty. My father is Jehovah. I'm a child of the most high God. I can go down. You know, Brian Tracy once made a statement. He said, there's no limit in what you can become. Except the limits you create for yourself. Lift up your hand. Jesus spoke some powerful words. Powerful. Mark 9, 23. He said, if you can believe, 
Zila masuka shita mayana. He didn't say if you can cry. He didn't say if you can shout. He said if you can believe. All things are possible. To him who believes. Let me ask you wonderful people of KPM. Prayer shift. This year 2024 I told you it's a glorious year. It's a year of the priesthood. Attached to the priesthood is divine supernatural provision. The priests were not working for things. They were provided for by reason of the office. 24 priests worked in the temple. 24 elders are surrounding the throne of heaven. Huh? They are sitting on 24 thrones. A day is governed by 24 hours. It's a year of rising to greatness. Are you understanding me? There's 24,000 miles that surround the whole earth globe. It's a year of ruling. Say, I rise. Listen, I can't talk about 2025. I don't know how it will be. But this year, it's a year of open heavens. Oh my God, your amen is too weak. If you didn't build a house, build it this year. If you didn't buy a car, buy it this year. If you didn't get that higher degree, get it this year. If you didn't make better money, make it this year. Do you want to build a business? Build it this year. Say, oh yeah, 2024, you are my year. Hey, this year, saints of God, and I was telling the brothers, I said, one of the things that made me to really break through in life, I embrace the slogan of Nike, the sportswear gear makers. You know them. Eh? Nike. What do they say? Just do it. God told me, I was shocked, before we built the church, the church was going to cost about one million US dollars. We hardly had money in the church account. God said to me, provision follows the vision. That's why you've got to write all your things down. Are you hearing me? The people who are controlling money, they don't shout like us. They don't stay for hours in church. They want to stay for an hour and go. They are rushing to count money. Write the vision down. Provision. Money is proud. Money is a spirit. Money is selective. It avoids fools. It is proud. Sometimes you pray for money. This has happened to me so many times. You find that the money is not coming. Because God has already seen that when the money comes at that time, I will foolishly use it. So God protects me and the money from the foolishness. So you are busy vibrating. Money refuses to come. Because your vision is not clear. Am I helping you? At my age, I must give you wisdom. State it clear. You must write down. God must see. Let's say the money comes. The 500 US dollars comes. God wants to see where is his cut. If he keeps on checking. You are saying nothing about him. He, he, he suspends the release. Delays the release. So if you say father God. Your cut is 10% plus another 10% just for honoring. Decorating you. Because you are my father. And then this other cut, I'm going to just give it to the church for the church project. And then the remainder of the money, this is exactly how I'm going to spend it. And this portion I will save. <laughs> Serious money never goes to people who are not wise. I, maybe they never told you. Money is proud. Money is strict. 
Money is a spirit. It has a persona. That's why the Bible says you can't serve God and money. Money has a joint city with God. People can choose money or God. And never forget this. Money does avoid fools. Lift up your hands and let's pray. I want you to, to repent to money. I want you to ask for forgiveness to money. And say, money, however, <laughs> I've despised you. I repent. However, I've mismanaged you. I repent. Pray, talk to God. Say, Father, qualify me again by the blood of Jesus to be a recipient of serious money yes pray lenda massacre say father god you can qualify me again lord you can qualify me almighty god to receive serious money again i promise that i won't be foolish when money comes in the name of jesus i will be a good manager of money i will use it oh my god wisely because money is selective money is proud money never goes to fools it cuts itself off when it sees someone who's not managing it well pray 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 lendo kapaziti mayanda say father i promise you from today i shall be a good steward a good steward a good steward a good steward yes a good steward a good manager of resources a good steward of money in the name of jesus christ my lord lembro hashina masaka yes shapa katala masaka baya oh i declare man is coming i declare man is coming now you receive words of wisdom so you will act wisely i declare the grace of man is coming upon you in the mighty name of jesus let's go back to the discourse if you want to maximize in these seven years beginning from this year please i'm begging you have a clear vision write down the things you want to achieve hallelujah as i'm standing before you have got architects I, i'm developing some accommodation units houses that i will lease out some i will sell are you understanding in Swaziland, it's okay because if you've got land property you can go to the bank and present your, your, your balance sheet, they'll give you whatever money you want. Because there's nothing wrong borrowing money for investment, there's something wrong borrowing it for consumption. Are you learning something? You can borrow money to invest, never borrow money to consume. Are you hearing me? So that you build your equity. Praise the name of the Lord. Build your equity. Every Christian carries MG, money grace. As long as we are a tither, as long as we are a giver. But where Christians fail, men of God, is in the action, in the side of working. Because when you place your money here, there's a grace that comes upon you. Remember, God does not give you cash. He gives you power to get. So the getting part needs uh, some business activity. Can we do it again? When you release your offering, uh, by the time you, you go out, there's an increase of power to get. You see, God told Isaac, stay here, I will bless you. If Isaac was like the Christians of today, he was going to go into his house, vibrate in tongues the whole day my savior all the day long but the man after he got that word the bible says he sojourned surveyed the land what was that it was a practical action of looking for opportunities he understood the economic situation of that time he identified the need of that time and the men swung to action to provide the crucial vital commodity that was going to be needed 
your man of God told you he was the first man who, who discovered the borehole technology. The man was selling corn, selling water. There was no rain. Ask your neighbor, you are busy vibrating. What are you selling? What are you selling? Prosperity is not a product of prayer. It is a product of giving, a product of innovation, a product of working. This church must shine. It must be a church that is full of multi-millionaires. Men and women who know how to make serious money. Are you understanding? Not you or your Christians. You are down today, you are up tomorrow, down tomorrow. No! We are not regulated by the world economic system. The economic system that regulates us is the heavenly one. Even during economic hardships we rise. That's why Job once wrote upon, once upon a time, he said, while others say we are going down, we'll say with us we are rising. Are you understanding? We are a different breed, different pedigree, different community. The Bible says we are a chosen generation. We've been called out of darkness to proclaim, to show forth the power of the God who saved us. You are not born again to struggle again. I'm angry now. You are not born again to be broke again. You are not born again to suffer again. Lift up your voice and say from tonight, I rise to my correct level. Say I reconfigure the way I see myself. I'm a child of the most high God. I can't go down. Hey! Be angry at poverty. Because if the church men of God has got poor Christians, it won't do much. It won't. You need to have a prosperity mentality. Say, I'm born of God. I carry the grace, the MG, money grace. Let's go back to the discourse. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, you shall factor, remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you what? Power to get. Every Christian who's born again, number one, who's a tither, number two, who is a giver of offering, number three, my God, who has the Holy Spirit? Every Christian has the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit anyway. Every born again Christian has got power to get. The problem is we don't deploy it. We give and we go and watch Netflix. Show Max. Can you imagine? After giving, you are sitting on this, you are watching all the TikTok funny videos until past midnight, until you remember, oh, it's prayer time now at church. So you are, you are looking on, looking on. God gives you time. In the time, you develop ideas. And those ideas must be for money making. Because money answers all things. You see, if you are broke, you, you, you don't have influence. Influence is for the affluent. We can't attract people to church if we are driving tired cars. You live in a house where the curtains have lost color. And inside you are busy vibrating. Say welcome apostle. This is your year of shining. Isaiah 60 says rise, shine for your light has come. The glory of Jehovah which is the Holy Ghost and his anointing has descended upon you. It says darkness will 
cover the earth deep darkness the people but they will be attracted to your light are you understanding me you must radiate refuse to be ordinary refuse to fail choose to shine hey people are watching you in my church now i've stopped giving out all this anointing oil holy soap holy soils holy water because people are it, it causes people to be lazy to think they hold on to elements underperforming the church is full of underperformers. Rise to your feet and say, from today, I'm going to be a shining star. I will be a pillar in this church. In the name of Jesus, say I'm a game changer. Say I will make God proud. I'm a results producer. Prosperity is mine. The grace of prosperity runs in my blood. Say thank you, Jesus. Say I will not underperform in Jesus' name. You know, this thing is so strong in my spirit. Isaac discovered a business concept that began to give him mega bucks. The Bible says in Genesis 26 12, the men plowed and sowed. Verse 13 says, and the men began to prosper. And he continued to prosper. But he never began to prosper through prayer. It was not vibrating that brought the money. It was strategic thinking. It was securing a business concept. Christians love drama. They don't love working. Are we discussing tonight? Christians love drama. Yeah. <laughs> if we we're, were part of the movie makers, we're going to do very well. <laughs> Listen to me. Power is in innovative thinking. I charge you in the presence of Jehovah your Father. I charge you in the presence of the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you. Whom you are suppressing every day. And I charge you in the presence of your men of God and your woman of God. Your spiritual father and mother. I charge you in the presence of their children. I charge you in the presence of this building. From this day, from this very hour, stop underperforming. Stop it. Become a think tank woman. A think tank man. Think out strategies. Hallelujah. A story is told that when Bill Gates was about 14 years old, a 14 year boy, he would occasionally disappear from the house and the mother would look for him, find him in a corner there. Bill, what are you doing there? I'm thinking. What are you thinking? Money making strategy. At 14 years, wow. Do you get time to think? When you sit alone in your room, how do I shift my life to the next level? What are the barriers? What are the limitations? Where am I wasting time? Because I've discovered God blesses the work of your hands. He doesn't bless your wishes. This is serious. If wishes were horses, beggars would be riding. The Bible in Habakkuk 2, 2 it says, write the vision down. I charge my members every year, I said, when the year begins, buy a new diary. Begin to write the things you need to achieve. This church must shock Zimbabwe. By December, the cars you will be driving. Your amen is weak. Your amen is weak. The house you'll be living in. 
those tired, discolored curtains will be a thing of the past. That shoe that has overcarried you for too many months, it will get a break. Your bedroom will get a redo. The Bible says in Zechariah 1.17, Thus says the Lord, that the cities of our God will be built through what? Through prosperity. We will build nothing for God if we are break. We are broke. Lift up your hands. Let me repeat the statement. We will build nothing for God if we are broke. I curse that spirit. Oh, I curse it in the name of the Lord. I remove it from your life forever. The grace for money comes upon you in a double portion in Jesus' name. You will innovate. You will think out new ideas. You will know what to supply Zimbabwe with. You will become one of the notable suppliers of vital commodities. You will become a supplier. Oh my God. You will become a supplier. This church must be full of suppliers. This church must be full of merchandisers. This church must be full of importers of goods. In the name of Jesus, like Lydia of Tiatira, the Bible says she was the importer of people, expensive material from Italy. I declare you shall import goods from Europe, goods from China, goods from Malaysia. Oh my God, you shall import goods. Rise and shine. Shine. Clap your hands and say, Yes, Lord, I'm rising. Say, Yes, Lord, I'm a seller of merchandise. I import merchandise. I ship goods from overseas. I ship goods, yes. Pray, 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 pray. If you can believe, all things are possible. If you can believe, oh, declare and say the underperformance is coming to an end. The failure to make money is coming to an end. The underperformance is coming to an end. Oh, Shalina Masuka Babaya. Hey. You can imagine on a Sunday you bring some friends, neighbors to church in a Viano. Yeah. Hey. When they enter it, there's a TV screen there. You say you can be watching our sermons even before we go to church. That's what our pastor preaches. We can't attract people if we are broken bastard. And I thank God I told you last time your father, the man of God, and the woman of God have already broken through. All you need to do now, just pull that grace. It's already in the house. Are you understanding me? Peter said to that lame man, in Acts chapter 3, such as I have, I give it to you. Already the grace for attracting material goods is in the house. Are you understanding me? Please reject failure. Say I reject it. Every limitation must leave you now. Now, let me give you the three weapons of victory for you to break through. Write them down. The things that you must engage on non-stop. Praise the name of the Lord. Number one, from today, you need to be a talker of God's language. The Bible told us in the book of Proverbs 18, beautiful verse number 21, it says life and death is where? It is where? It is where? So God has given you his word. Say the word. That's the weapon. Plus your mouth. I almost said big mouth. Eh? Plus what? Plus faith. When the word of God is spoken by your mouth consistently, 
miracles are produced. Why do you think your pastor proclaims so much word? Because the word is the material that God requires to produce your miracle. That's why Ephesians chapter 6, Paul, speaking to the church of Ephesus, in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning from verse 10, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Eh? He said, put on the whole armor of God so that you are able to stand against all the wiles of the devil. Eh? We fast forward, we go to verse 18 where it says, taking, I think it's verse 7, it says, taking what? The sword of the spirit, which is what? Which is the word of God. Become a talker of God's language. If you are praying for a particular financial breakthrough or you are praying for healing in your body, God will not perform that miracle unless you give him the material for producing it. It is the word of God that makes contact with your big mouth. If you pray to God and you don't follow it up by talking the word of faith concerning that matter, you will talk the whole year, nothing will happen. For every miracle, there must be a specific word attached. If it's healing, you attach First Peter 2.24. If it is financial breakthrough, you attach Isaiah 45 verse 3, where God says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places, so that by you my name may be glorified. That word, you've got to homologia it, you've got to matter it, you've got to recite it. You see, Muslims, they've got... Uh, uh, you, five times a day, they recite certain scriptures. Look at how they are taking over. It's useless to receive a word from the church and forget it when you go out of this door. Because your failure will result in people insulting your pastor. So when you are in your house alone or in your office or in your car, work the word. Recite it, recite it, recite it, recite it. By the wounds I was healed, by the wounds. And the word of God will not work if you say by the wounds I was healed. As soon as you finish, you drink Coke and fed cooks. I'm healthy because I do, I'm a disciplined eater. Yesterday before I traveled, I was on my treadmill. I don't know how many kilometers I ran on my treadmill. Because there's no gain without pain. Faith without works is dead. How can I expect to be healthy? I don't exercise. I eat junk. I'm always angry. How can I be healthy? Life is highly spiritual. You guard your heart. Are you understanding? Issues that don't sit well with you, you put them in a shelf somewhere. When it's time to deal with them, you open that shelf, you bring them out. After you are done, you put them back. Because you've got to guard your heart. Are you hearing me? Money avoids angry people. Remember, money was designed to make people happy. So if it finds you angry, it goes. Am I communicating in the house? Are you learning something? So you need to be, weapon number one is the word. Life and death is in the power of what? Of your tongue. Eh? Joshua 1.8 This book of the law must not depart from where? from your mouth. Meditate on it when? Day and night so that we are careful to do what it, what, what it commands. It says in that way you will make your ways what? Prosperous and you shall produce what? Good success. Who produces the success? Not God. It's you. While we are crying, we are waiting for God. God is waiting for you. This is our year. 
I prophesy from this coming week you will break through into amazing things. You shall be a walking wonder. If you are receiving this word, we are not in drama, I'm coaching you tonight. This is wisdom. Be a talker of the word. Hallelujah. You are declaring I'm a tither, I'm a giver. Money follows me. Money appears for me. The Bible says, give and it shall be given. As I'm wake, moving around this day working, someone will come and release money to me. And over and above that, after speaking, you obey the law of expecting. Are you hearing me? You obey what? The law of expecting. Every day, you visualize. Yes. Yes. Look up into the heavens. Say, Father, I can see my better tomorrow. My future is bright. Say, I can see money is coming. I can see new ideas are coming upon me. Innovation. New ideas strategies money making strategies i'm not born again to fail i carry the money grace god has given me power to get money by the work of my hands i will i will make money in the name of jesus say father god i am becoming one of the biggest givers in this church because i'm no longer ordinary i'm an anointed seller of merchandise i'm an anointed seller of products i'm an anointed importer of needed products and commodities here in zimbabwe father god money will flow into my life because i will work smart and i will work hard no more lazing around no more underperforming. Pray like you're praying. La Castalina Masuka. Lembra Hashana Masaka. Pray like you're praying. Pray like you're praying. Pray like you're praying. Lino Kamasuta Mayanda Masaka. Le Pro Hashina Masuka Babaya. Ye la Maseka Mashatamaya. Lambra kapazea bo shete la makosaya. Ye la maseka mamaya. Ye limanta masoka babayanta masaka. Ye la basaka babayanta masaka. Ye la masoka babaya. In Jesus name we pray. Weapon number two apart from your word. The word of God. That you speak with your mouth. Is the weapon of your new identity. Look at Isaiah chapter 61, precisely verse number 6 and 7. We are not ordinary people. I, especially if we read it in the New Living Translation. It says you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Can you see it? The Bible in Revelation 1, 5, it says unto Jesus... The faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler over all the kings of the earth, the one who loved us and washed our sins in his blood and made us kings and priests. This is a present day reality. You are not ordinary. You have a spiritual high office. Are you understanding me? Don't allow devils and circumstances that are undermining sinners to undermine you. You are in a high office. Ephesians 2, 6 says, After God saved us by his grace through Jesus, he made us to sit together with Jesus. Where? In the heavenly realms. You are earthly based, but spiritually positioned. In a high position of power. Are you understanding me? It says we shall be named. Go back to that Isaiah. I want you to see the benefit of who we are now. We are priests, we are kings. You'll be called priests of the Lord. Ministers of our God. You will feed on the treasures. What gives you power to access money is the office. Don't allow devils to undermine you. You know if I'm sleeping and then some dream comes, like a dream maybe 
it's like a car is chasing me or maybe some robbers you know it's a pity i don't dream these things but if i can dream it i can kick that blanket because it would be an undermining of my office How can you be sleeping a whole Christian by 1 a.m.? Something comes and chokes you. Jesus! Je Tell your neighbor, excuse me. I! Look at your neighbor and say, I! Who? He made us kings and priests. Even if robbers have drunk an extra wine and alcohol and whiskey, they never dare think of going to rob the house of the president. Why should the devil rob you of things that are biblically yours? Jesus came to qualify us to legally prosper. Lift up your hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I will not underperform. But listen to me. This is where the area that you need to work on is the area of your mind. Can I teach you something different? Forget about devil. If the devil can see that you now know who you are, they will walk away. Work on your mind. Work on your perception. When you are doing your makeup, your root, your, 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 your rooting, your, your pouching before the mirror, who do you see? You are not special because of the weave. You are special because of who you are. It's not the weave that makes you special. It is not the clothes we wear. The Bible says we are a chosen generation. We have a high position by reason of the new birth. Are you hearing me? Let's tell that devil to get lost. Tell poverty you've got no part in me. Say prosperity runs in my blood. Rise to your feet and say because of Jesus. Prosperity runs in my blood. I carry favor. Let us clap those hands and declare. Would I carry favor. Prosperity runs in my blood. I'm unstoppable. I'm a winner. I'm not born again to fail again. Say I'm born again to champion champion in life. I'm a chosen generation. Oh, Shala Masaka. Say I'm uncasable. I'm unbewitchable. Say poverty will never hold me down. I break through every time. Prosperity is mine. In the name of Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Are you blessed so far? Are you blessed so far? Are you blessed so far? Are you excited? Power is in your new identity. First Peter chapter, first John chapter 3, 1. It says, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. God. Verse 2 says the world does not know who us because it never knew Jesus but now we are who? Children of God. Power of identity. Before you board a plane they want to see your ID. ID gives you access. Are you learning something? Before they allow you to receive a parcel sent from UK, they want your ID. ID gives you access. You are not catching it. I can feel you in my ID gives you access. You can go to, a, to the bank and they start quitting you. The moment you say, oh, sorry, madam, I'm actually the daughter of the president. Ah. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, please find out what you want. ID gives you access. As long as you see yourself as a child of your father and your grand grandparents from the village, there's nothing for you. 
in this kingdom. Because the Bible just says, just as you think, so shall you be. Let's pray. Just pray for yourself. Be sincere. Say, Father, I repent because I've not yet embraced my new identity. I see myself as that rejected woman, that troubled person, that struggling man there. Father God, I change. I reconfigure myself. We are born of the blood of Jesus, born of the spirit of God. We are not born again to suffer again. Yes, talk to God, talk to God, talk to God. Lambro Kapazata. It's a mockery to God for me and for you to see ourselves like those same people we used to be. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 17, if a person has connected to Christ, he's a new creation. The old order has passed. Behold! A new order is kicked in. Say, Father, I embrace myself in the order of the new identity. I'm a child of the Most High God. I belong to your mighty Father. I belong to your great Jehovah. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, all the curses are gone. The misfortune is gone. Yes, every bloodline curse is gone, diffused and dissolved by the blood, removed by the blood of the eternal covenant. I possess the new nature, the nature of Jehovah. I'm a child of the Most High God now. Lambroha Shana Masaka. Yes, Shalina Masukabaya. The new identity. Say thank you, Jesus. Say I know who I am. You know the song that is sung by Sinaj that says, I know who I am? Play that song nonstop. It's a powerful song. She really worked on that project. I wonder how many Christians are catching that. That song is fully biblical. The Bible says, just as Jesus is in heaven, so are we like him. Refuse to allow circumstances and devils to undermine you. Hallelujah. You remember when David was standing in front of Goliath? Eh, you remember? The men knew who he was. The king, the army of Israel, his brothers were all hiding behind rocks. David appeared there, he finds this guy who was two times his height. Eh? David was about 1.8. Eh? Goliath was about 8 meters. Tall. He had six toes per foot, six per hand. The hand was like a shovel. If he claps you, you fall before he touches you. <laughs> he was wearing size, the army boot he was wearing was size 25. Hello? Every size 12 here, Goliath was wearing times two of your size 12. Eh? This boy appears, he finds everyone hiding, said, what's happening here? It's all about the victor's mindset, knowing who you are. When problems arise, you up your sleeve. You say, I'm fit for this. I'm a fighter. I'm a warrior. Sickness, we are attacking a wrong one. Are you understanding me? You've got to know who you are. When the man of God is declaring the word, you say, I hear you three times because I know who I am. Poverty cannot hold me down. I always break loose. Money loves me because I'm a child of God. The silver and the gold belongs to Papa God. Hey, you must be a warrior. From tonight, warriors must rise. Say, I'm one of them. Say, I rise, I shine, I rise, I shine. Yes, I rise, I shine, I rise, I shine. I rise, I shine, I rise, I shine. In the name of Jesus. You tell the man of God, from now, I will not give tired U.S. dollar bills. 
Because they will impart that spirit of tiredness to me. You look for the fresh ones. Because you carry the fresh grace. You carry the fresh anointing. You carry the money grace. Hallelujah. Say I refuse the tired pills. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's right. And all its fullness. Let me see those who are the children of the most high God. God is your papa. He's the most high. He's the most high. So why are you most down? He's the most high. And we are most down. He's the most high. And we are most down. Say not after tonight. Say father in the name of Jesus. I've been shortchanged for too long. I've been delayed for too long. I'm taking it by force. In the name of Jesus. Say by the power of my new identity. I'm unstoppable. The Bible that never lies. Say in 1 John chapter 5 verse number 4. Every child of God. Oh, Shalina Masuka. In the New Living Translation, I love it. It says, Every child of God does what? Over. Oh, Shalima Sukabaya. Say, I overcome. Let me see the overcomers in the house. Say, It's me. Hallelujah. Every child of God does what? From this time, man of God, no one is giving because you want a breakthrough. Hmm? You give because we are increasing the money grace. You are no longer baby Christians. We need to grow. The Bible says we must grow in the grace. If you look at seven, Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7, Paul says, as you excel in faith, in speech, in wisdom, also see to it that you excel in the grace of giving. Amen. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. So weapon number one is the word of God on your mouth, right? Weapon number two is your identity. Move around with heaviness. You must feel yourself. Shoulders up. Chest out. Square up. Chest out. Don't be afraid of anything. David said to that tall Goliath. He was looking up like this. Goliath was. He said you come to me with your spear. Your javelin and your sword. I'm coming against you. In the name of the God who is my father. In the name of the God of the armies of Israel. Whom we are despising. Whatsoever despises you. It despises your God. Ha! He said you know what. I'll cut your head off. And I'll give it to the birds of the air. You see. How Goliath lost the war. He was, he was confused. The man suffered the mental short circuit because he could not understand how a boy whose size I double can say he's not even carrying. He said he'll cut off my. So while while Goliath was trying to understand what's happening. Oh, I declare you will bring down every Goliath. Because you are a child of the Most High God. Say, I'm a warrior. I'm a fighter. I'm a giant killer. I confront problems. I don't complain about them. In the name of Jesus, now prophesy the sinner's song. Say, I know who I am. I'm God. I'm who God says I am. Oh, Shalina Masakababaya. Yeah, 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 prophesy. Prophesy, I know who I am. I'm who God says I am. Prosperity is mine. Lambra kapazata bayana. Speak it, oh my God. Speak it with vigor. Speak it with aggression. Declare your new status. Say, I refuse. 
you touch your body, you say, I command every pain to go. I command my internal organs to be renewed right now. I command my, my blood cells to be renewed. My muscles, my tissues, pain must go. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Sickness is illegal. Thank you, Jesus. Number three, weapon. Are you still in the house? Over and above your identity. Your victory is the faith. Faith is your weapon. What is faith? To be sure. People complicate faith. Faith is simply to be sure. That no matter what challenge is before me, I will conquer it. Every day, you don't walk by analyzing the circumstances. You walk by declaring, I overcome. Every day, I overcome. Every day, I win. Every day, I break through. Every day, I take over. Every day, money is coming. Every day, I connect with the right people. When they ask you, how are you? I overcome. Faith is a language. It's not a wish. Read the person next to say, how are you? Answer him. How are you? Say, you say I'm okay. You'll get nothing like that. You're being too psychological and too scientific. Hallelujah. When they say, how are you? I overcome. How are you? I win. How are you? I conquer. How are you? Doors are opening for me. How are you? My tomorrow is better than today. How are you? I'm a winner. Move around and say I'm a winner. How are you? I overcome. How are you? I conquer. How are you? I, I ho ho ho. How are you? Doors are opening for me. How are you? I am winning. Yes. During COVID, we were using a lot of sanitization. People were carrying sanitizers in their handbags. Everywhere you go, sanitizer. Afraid of COVID. Sanitize the negative spirit. Remove it. Are you understanding? Before problems COVID you, sanitize yourself with the word. Before problems COVID you, sanitize yourself with the word. The word of God stands forever. Hallelujah. Greet the person next to you. How are you? What did she say? How are you? I'm victorious. How are you? I'm an overcomer. How are you? I'm living over 100 years. I will not die before my time. How are you? I'm an overcomer. Hey, when I came in, I felt like the, the man of God, my covenant brother, he's sweating to people who are poor us. They don't retain. When they leave this door, they can't even remember the scriptures. Just by the corner, after parking your car, how are you? Ah, yeah, 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 it's tough. Ah, with all the over thousand scriptures, declare the man, you are no show. That doesn't work. It works. You are porous. You don't retain. The scriptures ne never lie. Have you seen it? First John 5, 4. Never forget that. How are you? I overcome. Problems will always come. But the victory is our faith. Faith is a language. It must be spoken. Hallelujah. When you're driving your car, say, I can't be in an accident. They say, you're proud. You say, no, I, I'm a faith person. I'm a faith practitioner. You, have, you don't understand me. Are you understanding me? You say, sickness cannot survive in my body. It will come, but it can't thrive. Yeah. 
And you start moving, you say, I'm the bone of his bones. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Sickness will always be biblically illegal. It is this allowed. Sickness is an encroachment. I reject it. Pain, go. <laughs> Did you hear me? I said, pain, go. Hey, arthritis, go. Diabetes, disappear. Oh, ye my body be renewed. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The man of God may prophesy over you, but you need to be a prophet of your destiny. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you see him, you say, man of God, I'm just getting ready to give you serious money. They hear you, they say, from where? You say from the faith territory. I'm connected. I'm connected to the economy of heaven. But if the man of God says from end of the month, I want people who will give five thousand dollars. Oh my God, from where? You say yes, yes. Because you attract there's a law of attraction. You attract what you believe, what you expect. If you talk bad about people that prosper, prosperity will hate you. It's a spirit, it has got ears. Say thank you, Jesus. Lift up your name, thank God. Did you learn something? Did you learn something? This is the month of April. I've come. Each time I come, God, Job. I don't need to be talking a lot of things. Whenever a man of God come in your territory, Spiritually, it marks the ushering of a new season. Amen. So all of you tomorrow, you are going to prepare a serious offering Amen. according to your level. Because, let me make this statement. Material acquisition and financial access is not activated by prayer. Giving is more powerful when it comes to financial and material and opportunities access. Those things is a department that you activate by giving. If you are hungry for new opportunities in business, new opportunities in career, you don't pray for that. You give for it. Never forget this. Whenever you feel it's like you are blocked, like there's some delays concerning accessing certain material things or opportunities, don't pray. Release a weapon. The name of it is your seed, your offering. Where prayer fails concerning a particular material financial breakthrough, giving will never fail. Did you learn that lesson? When I came here, the office that God appointed me in, it carries a grace. Do you understand? Are you understanding? So because I'm here, together we need to agree with your men of God that this season is over. A new one is activated. Are you understanding? This is concerning material, financial, and opportunities access. Lift up your hand. When I come here, man of God, I hear you. You even reach in some things, your notes on poverty. Please stop talking. Poverty has a weapon. It's a weapon of mass destruction. You kill it not by giving, by constant giving. Amen. You annihilate it. You butcher, you slaughter it. And strive to give at all levels. Give your tithes. Give your special offerings. Give your priestly offerings. Give to the poor. Amen. Let's do it again. Give what? Your tithes. Your special offering for church project. Your priestly offering direct to the men and the woman of God. Because you are activating manifold graces. So that in all angles... You are shut approved. Four levels. 
say giving is a weapon of mass destruction. It annihilates, it slaughters, it scatters, it destroys poverty from its roots. Let's do it again. Say giving. You know now the world is afraid. There's two guys that are crazy. The president of Iran and that one of North Korea. The one of North Korea, he wakes up and says, I think we should push the button. What is he talking about? Nuclear weapon. And Biden loses his sleep. For Christians, we slaughter poverty. By one weapon of mass destruction called giving. Mike Mudok once said, the moment God puts some money in your hands, he has just put weapon in your hands for destroying poverty. Not just that, for pushing yourself to the next financial level. Every money that comes is not just for consumption. It's for pushing you to the next level. Hallelujah. You people give, but your problem is that after giving, you don't profess the problem. You water your seed with your words. After giving, you keep on saying, money comes. A harvest is coming. They say, from where? From my sowing. From where? At the church. The money sits on the altar spiritually. This is ground. Rich ground. Are you understanding? Every sower is entitled to a harvest. Those demons that were robbing your money, diverting it, will scatter them. The money due to you will come to you. I say the money due to you will come to you. Monies that are blocked are released. In the name of Jesus, you release blocked money with a sacrifice. What did I say? I didn't hear you. What did I say? With prayer, with fasting, you will lose weight for nothing. With a sacrifice.